Well, welcome in, everyone, and thank you once again for listening to Ministers with Mugs. Just want to give you guys a quick reminder. You can subscribe to our podcast on Spotify Podcasts as well as uh, Apple iTunes. So if you go to the podcast store and search Ministers and M- with Mugs, you will find us. So go ahead and hit subscribe and leave us a review, and then you can also watch us on YouTube. So today's episode, Pastor Jay and I talk a little bit about Easter weekend coming up and the different services and opportunities that each and every one of you have to uh, join in yourself and to invite people to. So this is a, a holiday where we celebrate the foundation of our faith as Christians and celebrate the one that has paved the way for us to to be Christ followers and to live a life filled with his presence and empowered by his spirit. So I hope you guys enjoy today's episode of Ministers with Mugs. Making sounds. That doesn't sound good. Hey, good day, everyone. Welcome in. Pastor Nate sitting over here on the west side of the table. South side. And, uh, south side. South side. Pastor Jay's over there on the north side. I'm a north sider, the, baby. Go Cubs. The Cubby side. Go Cubbies. White Sox probably will be better this year. Ah, just so you know. I'm just, yeah, unfortunately. But, so that leads us into our first topic today. Baseball <laughs> is back. <laughs> I don't think that's our first topic. Well, it's mine. Okay. So baseball's back. To all you baseball fans, congrats. Spring training, you know. Congrats. Wow. But I think probably, Baseball's back. probably the best thing is it's not negative 30 degrees, and it's <laughs> going to be near 70 today. Near 70. So what a time to be alive. What a time. I'm going to go golfing later. You should. I can't. A lot of things going on. We're busy. Okay. Busy, hey, busy. Are you getting a golf pass? Um, Probably. Yeah. You probably should. Are you? Yeah. Eventually, when it's warm enough to golf. Yeah. Don't want to spend the money now if I don't have to. Uh, well, Nate, you're so frugal. I'm a fru guy. That's why uh, That's why they call you whiskers. Mm, yep. Because <laughs> you're frugal, <laughs> like a cat. Hey, uh, we just <laughs> want to thank you guys for joining us today on another episode of Ministers with Mugs. Um, as I stated earlier, I'm Pastor Nate. This is Pastor Jay. And uh, we love Jesus a whole lot. We love coffee a whole lot. Yep. And uh, we want to talk about what God's doing in our lives and in this church. So before we get into that, just want to encourage you guys to, you can follow us and listen on Spotify and iTunes, also on our church's web uh, YouTube page. So go do that and uh, let us know what you think. And please, uh, you know, share some comments, give us a review, all that jazz. Hopefully this is beneficial to you and been a blessing to your life. And I know it is for us because it's always good to talk things out. Yeah. And so, see counselors to talk it out, right? Yeah, don't only listen, just share it up if you can. Share. Tell somebody about it and uh, if it's a blessing to you. Yeah. Um, we don't want to just do this for no reason. We're trying to mm-hmm. provide individuals with content. Content. That will benefit their lives and allow them to walk with the Lord yes. on a daily basis. And that's what we do in our jobs as well as pastors. Word. Or ministers. Word, bro. I call myself a reverend. Reverend. <laughs> I see what you did there. You said it were wrong again to make me feel. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that your dad's e- email? I think that I can bring some resolution to this whole pan Pam situation. I honestly thought that's what you were doing. No. <laughs> okay. Check out last week for a funny moment where Nate didn't know how to say the word pandemic. So he had to really work on that one. Yep. Uh, Last night I did the one with Chad. And I don't know if you heard me, but I was trying to say divine. I said devoin. 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 Yeah. It's like a Bostoner or something. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, Shout out to Laura. When she used to work here, I would always, whenever she was around, I would talk in a Wisconsin accent. Minnesota. <laughs> I know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just, you know, in case, yeah. <laughs> just in case she may watch <laughs> Minnesota. So we talked about don't hot, you know? hot dishes. Oh, and uh, Oh, don't forget your coat. You're mm-hmm. going to catch cold out there. Don't forget it. Don't forget your coat. Don't forget your winter coat. You don't need it anymore because it's going to be mid-60s today yeah, in Nebraska. Okay. Here we go. So, Come on. Let's I get moving. I'm excited. Hey, Nate, what, mug, what kind of mug do you have yeah, today? Today I have a pretty standard mug. Hmm. 
Uh, there's not much special about it other than I requested a mug shaped like this, and my wife bought it for me. Uh, it's a beautiful shape because it gets big in the middle, mm-hmm. so it holds more coffee, and then tapers. Kind of like me. I'm kind of big mm-hmm. in the middle. <laughs> and then it tapers up top. They so call those ke- mugs a J mug. It ke- <laughs> it's called a J mug. Okay, it keep, let me finish my comment. Okay, wow, it, your coffee is so keep, cool. It keeps the coffee warmer longer because of the shape. So I would just like to thank Emily Fru for this mug. Yeah, and also my mug today I stole from my wife. It says Emily on it. Oh. So if you didn't know, both of our wives are named Emily. Great name. So if you find a, if you're a single guy out there and you find a girl named Emily and she really loves Jesus, you get her. You, you grab her with everything that you, everything you can go after. Yep, you pursue, you relentlessly pursue, relentlessly. just as Jesus has done to you. To you. So Emily, thank you for the mug. Um, I'm using it today with great joy mm-hmm. in my heart. Uh, and every, I would I would like to echo that sentiment. Every time every time I pick it up and I see her name, it just reminds me of how incredible my wife is. That's good. Yeah, she doesn't watch, so I think. <laughs> My no, wife does. So. Oh, yeah? Does she critique you? <laughs> like she can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We love our Emilys. Yes, we do. Hey, uh, so what we're going to do today, and uh, we're not going to take a ton of time, but we want to give everyone the opportunity to uh, hear some things that are coming up here at Abundant Life, um, also churches across the country. But yeah. uh, what we're doing this year for... For Easter, Easter weekend, 2021, Easter. last year, Easter 2020, did not go as planned. Mm. Uh, we thought we were going to be able to open up the church uh, by Easter, and that didn't happen. And um, looking back, it was kind of silly that we thought that. But hey, we were hopeful. And so this year, uh, we are excited to do Easter as a church. And yeah. um, we're doing it in person. We're doing it online. We're doing whatever we can to gather together, um, like I said, whether it be in person or online, because we are going to glorify Jesus and his life, his death, his resurrection, and yeah, go man. after it. So uh, first things first, why don't you share a little bit about uh, the why of, of Easter weekend yeah. and you know what the, the holiday is. Yeah, man, it is the greatest celebration that we have as Christians, as the foundation of our faith. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason that we, are, um, we have hope, and the reason we have a future is because of the work of Jesus. Um, and from the plan that God had from the very beginning of creation, understanding that Jesus was the fruition of that plan, um, with the extension um, of all modern-day believers, understanding that he was, he, he was the foundation to build the church that we, we enjoy today and that we walk in today. He is the personal Savior. He is our corporate savior. He is everything that we need, everything that, um, everything that we've, we will ever need, Mm -hmm. um, was accomplished by Jesus, uh, through his death, burial and resurrection. And so Easter is an opportunity for all of us to come together and celebrate that. Um, not religiously, but through personal gratitude Mm -hmm. for what he's done in our hearts and in our lives. Yeah. I mean, Jesus is the foundation of our faith as Christians and his work on the cross and Jesus's work on the cross and in the, in the tomb is the reason that we are alive today, that we have the opportunities that we have, that we have hope. Like you said, yeah, that's cool. Uh, It made me think of one of the sermons that you had. I can't remember if it was an Easter sermon or not, but you know, just talking about how Jesus is enough and what he did on the cross is enough. And and I think one of the, the cool comments from that sermon is if we have nothing else in our life, if we just have Jesus, that's enough. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. And that goes into every aspect and every yeah. portion of our life. Um, you know, even Jesus making the way for the Holy Spirit to be released. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're a charismatic church. We're a um, We're a Pentecostal church. We believe in the work of the Holy Spirit. We believe the work that needed to be done. And even mm-hmm. in Jesus's life, you know, we studied Jesus's life a lot. Um, but this is an opportunity to reflect on his death as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at Christmas, I always share, you know, we can't, we don't want to celebrate just the birth of Jesus, mm-hmm. but Christmas is an opportunity to share the entirety of the gift. And Easter is an opportunity to reflect on the purpose of of Christmas, yeah. the purpose mm. of the birth, the purpose of yeah. a life that Jesus lived free of sin and complete righteousness so that he could be the perfect lamb 
sacrificed for sin from the very beginning to now. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just an incredible miracle. And it it really is the miracle that that is the foundation of everything that we walk in and that we believe. And so um, being able to celebrate that together. So uh, here at Abundant Life, we celebrate um, Good Friday. Uh, We have a service where we talk about the crucifixion itself Mm -hmm. and what that looked like and what that, um, what that entailed. And um, you're going to lead that service this year. So we want to talk a little bit about that and what, what's getting you excited about that service on Friday night? Uh, well, um, I mean, it's that service is it's, it's difficult because that day in and of itself was a very difficult day. Um, because once you learn, once you learn, uh, the weight of what actually happened, uh, I mean, that's information you can't unlearn and yeah. you develop a sense of appreciation and awe for what Jesus endured that day. And then when, you know, you, if you just look at the events, it's like, man, that was incredible that he made it through. But when you take a step back and look at why he did those events and what it produced because he endured those events, I mean, that just, you can't help but be encouraged to to live a life of sacrifice like him. I mean, yeah. he endured the the worst, yeah. the worst of the worst, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually. I mean, he was beaten. He was uh, mocked nonstop and just put on display to be ashamed. Yeah. And so th- that service, it, it's a tough service because, th- I mean, that's the day that Jesus died. He died on a Friday and he was crucified then. So we honor the sacrifice that he made that day and take the time to to remember it and to to dive deep because you know learning that information it just creates it produces something in you that makes you uh, understand the level of responsibility that we now carry as Christians in our life and yeah. and then just being in awe of what he did and what he overcame yeah and one thing you did say was it gives you a different perspective and uh you know i i think that's really good um we, we I think that we've become comfortable as Christians with the cross yeah. <laughs> and to get uncomfortable with what Jesus went through, I think gives you a better perspective of the reasons and the why that he went through what he went through and how much he loves you. And, yeah. Um, what, what kind of, I mean, if you could, if you could just say, this is, this is something as you've studied all of this, what is one takeaway that has really impacted your life? It doesn't have to be like detail, but, um, what is one thing that you say, because I've studied the crucifixion itself and the details of it, this is one thing that I understand to a greater level right now. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, what? I guess what hit me, the, the initial thing that hit me about when I learned about the day was, you know, the amount of physical pain he actually endured. And like I, I read a book called uh, the, the case for Christ, mm-hmm. and it goes deep into, you know, the the writer, the author of the book interviews a doctor, a medical doctor, and says, what would have happened to Jesus's body if these things did take place? It, like with the way the Romans crucified, with the way they whipped people, yeah. what would happen to his body? And so it was, it was kind of graphic, but it was a very detailed response on what Jesus was actually doing, how his body was actually responding. So I think for me, the, like, I watched The Passion of the Christ, that movie when that came out, and that was, that was a good, I mean, you saw, you you saw what was the result of the physical beating, but what I learned recently that really um, spoke to me was the, the emotional anguish that Jesus felt the Thursday night, the night before in the garden. Yeah. Praying in the garden. I think it's in Luke. It says that his sweat became like uh, drops of blood. Yeah. And there's an actual condition. And I think it's called hematidrosis. Super smart. Pandemic. Pandemic. Uh, So it's an actual condition where, and it's caused by extreme anxiety, Mm -hmm. which that that's probably what Jesus was enduring that day. Yeah. So just seeing, just seeing the that that was something. I mean, when you read that that there was droplets, there was drops of blood. He was sweating out. It was like you don't 
Oh, you didn't really understand. Yeah, you don't it fully until, comprehend in, until you see. Why. Like, wow, it's it's an actual condition. Yeah, and it's brought on by extreme stress and anxiety, and yeah. that is exactly what Jesus was enduring, and it honestly prepared his body in a way to make the next day even more excruciating. Yeah, because it makes the skin hypersensitive, yeah. hypersensitive and fragile. Yeah, too, and fragile skin is not good if you're going to be whipped. No. No, um, you know, I think that brings even more power to the phrase he used in the garden is God, you know, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but yours be yeah, done. Like yeah. it, Jesus's desire was not to be crucified. His no. desire was to glorify the father mm-hmm. and to, like he told his disciples, it is good that I'm going to go. He, he knew what was going to come with the release of the Holy Spirit and he knew what the father was calling him to. And so I think that for me in the gar- <clears throat> when we talk about the garden is just incredibly powerful. Like I don't always want to do what the father's asking me to do. Mm -hmm. And that's not disobedience. That's not rebellion. That's just, I mean, Jesus was there Mm -hmm. and now I'm not, I don't think I'm going to the cross at any point, but Jesus understood and he knew what was coming and how much greater if God, if Jesus himself could submit himself as a human to the will of the father that gives, that empowers me to do the same. Mm -hmm. With, with my daily life, with everything that I'm walking through, um, with whatever stresses, you know, that I, that I have or that I'm carrying. Mm-hmm. Or, so um, that for me was incredible. Well, and and it's so a, it's the same battle too. Yeah. Like the, and, and, you know, Jesus was praying and twice he came back and his disciples were sleeping and he said something along the lines that, you know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh. Flesh is weak, man. Flesh is weak. And yeah. So Jesus was enduring that battle as well, and then that's the battle that we in, endure on a daily, daily walk. Yeah. So it, yeah, incredibly powerful. I'm excited. I'm always excited for that Friday night yeah. service, and then um, for this this year once again, we're we as a staff and and we're inviting um, those of you as a church to fast with us on Saturday through our Saturday night prayer and worship mm-hmm. service, and we know that uh, Easter is an opportunity because of because of the uh, weight of the holiday mm-hmm. um, that we'll see people that we might not normally yep. see on a Sunday morning and give mm-hmm. opportunity for um, people to come in. And, and um, it's a great opportunity for you, for us to invite people that would normally um, that would normally not come to church. I think Barna did a survey a couple years ago and said that 85 percent of non-church goers if invited to yeah. an Easter service e- would come yeah. um, simply because of the, the, ram- the weight of what Easter is. And mm-hmm. And so it's a great opportunity. So Saturday night, we really pray and set the atmosphere of worship for God. Would you just draw all men? Would you draw whoever needs to be here? Mm-hmm. Would you give us courage? Would you put people on our hearts? So we spend a time of fasting that day and uh, preparing our hearts for yeah. uh, what God is about to do on Sunday. And then Sunday, just um, celebration of the resurrection. Yeah. And uh, I love it. Um, it's an opportunity for us to, um, throughout the whole process, to walk through that whole process of the garden yeah. to the to the to the crucifixion to the burial to to feel and sense kind of what the disciples were going through while Jesus was not with them mm-hmm. they you know they uh, P- you know Peter one of the things he said is I'm gonna go back and fish and how heartbreak and and some of the things and and lack of lack of the uh, release of the expectations that we've had um, can so it can sometimes look different and yeah. and what do we do when those times come but then celebrating the resurrection and if we we're crucified with Christ, then we're also resurrected with him. And so Amen. it's a beauty of baptism. Yes. It's the symbolism of baptism that we um, are dead to the flesh. We're dead to our to ourselves, and we're alive again in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. And um, without the resurrection, um, there is no, there's no uh, foundation for our right. faith. There's no Christianity. Um, it proved so much. And, and one of the things that we get to do is celebrate that, talk about that, mm-hmm. um, give gratitude for that. Yeah. And uh, give opportunity for those who are hurting and broken, lost to understand mm-hmm. their reality. Uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the good news yeah, of sure. his life, his death, and his resurrection. And even now today, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. Mm-hmm. And so um, it's an incredible time. I'm excited yeah. about it. Uh, what, uh, you, were, you were mentioning that we're doing something as a church as well. Correct. Um, yeah. That, that people can be looking out for and also sign up for, even if mm-hmm. people don't go to our church. Absolutely. Uh, what is that? So <clears throat> read a book a couple years ago, uh, essentially talking about the last phrases that Jesus shared while on the cross. And yeah. there's seven different things that Jesus said while on the cross. Mm-hmm. 
So what we're going to do uh, that week leading up to Easter is uh, we're, our staff is going to write a devotional for each phrase, and um, we're going to email it out every morning. We're going to put it on uh, Facebook as well so uh, you can still access it, but it, it's really taking a deep dive at the, the phrases that Jesus said while on the cross. And yeah. there's a level of importance that I've come to understand of those phrases because, you know, once you learn about the crucifixion yeah. and the physical pain that he was enduring and hanging on the cross, it is incredibly, well, I, I don't know, but, but uh, it, it's incredibly difficult to even breathe. To breathe, you have to push up and try to elevate your chest so that you can open up your lungs. So every single breath on the cross is excruciating. It takes a ton of energy, and uh, most people, per, uh, they die on the cross because they can no longer breathe. They suffocate, yeah. So the mere fact that Jesus was able to say seven different phrases while on the cross, mm -hmm. I put a high level of value and importance on those things. Yeah. So this year, we're like I said, we're going to... Um, each of our staff is going to write a devotional. We're going to email it out. Um, so we ha you can sign up for our email through our Facebook pages and also our website. So if you want to do that, you can. Which is Abundant Life GI. ALCCGI.com. ALCCGI.com is our website. Mm -hmm. And then if you're searching for us on YouTube or, uh, or Facebook, on Facebook or Instagram, it's Abundant Life GI. Abundant Life GI. All lowercase. So I'm really excited about that. I mean, it's just another another thing that we can do for ourselves to fully understand and appreciate what it was that Christ did for us on on that day, on that weekend. So uh, we'll be emailing that out um, the week leading up to Easter Sunday, and you're welcome to share it with people, go through it um, with family, friends, and we're all, we're also gonna have a print edition. So uh, Pastor Holly is working on something that we're gonna have available for. Everyone uh, who, who wants something physical, uh, we'll have that available for you on Palm Sunday, which is another aspect of the Easter weekend that yeah. I kind of want to highlight and have you share a little bit about Palm Sunday and the significance of that and why it is is important and tied into the Easter celebration. Yeah, and I don't want to ruin the whole that Sunday because I'm excited about that Sunday, but Palm Sunday is the celebration of of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem yeah. and his preparation for what he knew was coming as disciple. He told, it was, it's funny, he told his disciples pretty much everything. He just laid it out, and his disciples still didn't but. get it. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How often are we like that, though? Yeah. Like, Jesus, like, he lays things out, yet the circumstances and situations yeah. right in front of us can sometimes derail us Indeed. from Indeed. Uh, going after what he has. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, Palm Sunday is an incredible opportunity to celebrate yep. that triumphal entry and the, and the first step in that process that Jesus took in mm -hmm. being obedient to the Father. Um, and we'll go into that more. We'll study Good. that more. I Good. mean, I'm excited for this for this series this this uh, this season. Yeah, honestly, the next two months here are incredibly exciting. So don't yeah. miss out. Let, let's get plugged in. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, Palm Sunday is going to be the last Sunday in March, which I think is the 28th. Yeah, And then, you know, we just also want to encourage you guys. We, we'll have prayer and worship that night at 6. Uh, we're doing it Wednesday night as well, prayer and worship. Um, don't want to miss that. That's going to be a great time. So we have a full weekend planned. Yeah, And for all you people with, with kiddos, with ninos, Pastor Holly does have some exciting things going on for kids, some, um, some games, some treats, some interactive learning that they'll be doing during services. And honestly, all of our weekend services are family friendly. Yeah, I mean, bring the family. That that that's walk as our walks as Christian is is all about family. So bring them. Yeah, one of the things I'm excited about this uh, the devotionals that we're doing is we're gonna we're gonna be able to do it as a family together and yeah. walk through that and uh, talk about why we celebrate what we celebrate. And I think in any portion of our our Christian walks, the the why is so important. Mm -hmm. understanding why Jesus did what he did. Yeah. Why, you know, why was the resurrection so important? Why, you know, what did he do in the, that time period when he yeah. descended into, into hell and, and stole the keys of death, hell and the grave back yeah. um, from when Adam relinquished his rights mm -hmm. on this earth to the, to the enemy by being obedient to him. And so uh, all of those things are just, there's so much depth and intricacy in the process 
Mm-hmm. Um, it, and some of it is a mystery that we may not understand until mm-hmm. until his return. Um, but it sets us up for success. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the greatest thing is it set, sets us up for um, for today, mm-hmm. what God has for us today. So yeah. um, I love it. It's an exciting time yeah. with family. Um, I would encourage you, uh, don't do Easter alone. No, you no. Know? no. Do it with a, with a local congregation. If mm-hmm. Abundant Life's your church, come. Come on. Be with us. If, uh, if you have a church home, go be with them. Um, if you're looking for a church home. Um, we're we, biased. Yeah, we, we like <laughs> we what, think we're great. No, we think we're great. Uh, there is not a perfect church out there. No. Um, but each church is called to specific areas and specific realms of the kingdom and, and as you are. And so find your, find your tribe, find your family, find the people that you can do life with together. Uh, what through small groups, mm-hmm. through uh, through Bible studies, um, through Sunday morning uh, expressions, through prayer services, all of those things. And so, why we do what we do is we want people to have an opportunity to connect in community because yep. that's where discipleship happens for sure. Um, and so, Easter weekend, man, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's uh, it's a month away. It's crazy. I'm yeah, that's so be good. So probably yeah. over these next um, over these next three podcasts, we'll probably really focus in on okay. maybe one or two aspects of of this Easter time, and maybe mm-hmm. put it together into okay. some sort of uh, study format yeah. so that you can get something out of it. So. Yeah, and I just want to highlight one thing that you said earlier. You referenced a uh, a study done by the Barna Group. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it said somewhere around eighty five percent of people who don't go to church, who aren't Christians, who don't know anything about it, they would come to an Easter service simply if they were asked. Yeah. Like, all we have to do, I'm including myself in this, is say, hey, do you want to come to church with me on Easter? You know, to people outside yeah. the faith, you know, the, they they see it as a, a holiday event, you yeah. know, and which it absolutely is, but man, it's, it's an opportunity for Christians to appreciate what Jesus, the foundation of our faith did for them. And it's a great way for people who don't know Jesus to gain that understanding and yeah. learn what Jesus did for them because he didn't just die for Christians. You know, he right. died for every single person. He, he wants, he opened the door for everyone to come to him. Yeah. And so 85% of people, so eight and a half out of 10 people that you ask and you just simply say, do you want to come to church with me on Easter weekend? We have all these services. We got stuff for kids. Do you want to come? People are going to say yes. Yeah. And we're not doing it to fill our church. We're doing it be, to fill the kingdom. Yeah. And if that's a way to people get it into the kingdom, let's go. Yeah. And I think the, like, if you're, if you're talking about the reality of, of most believers and most Christian walks, um, it's not the gospel that scares us, it's our responsibility once that gospel okay. is released yeah. to, and I don't want to get super in depth <laughs> into this, but the, the truth is like most of us would say, Hey, yeah, we want to see people saved. Mm-hmm. But as believers, we understand the process of discipleship and how that can get messy and stuff. And so as a church, you know, this is one of my heart's cry and this is something I've been praying over. And we talked about this earlier, even today is what does discipleship look like? How can we provide tools for people to make it easier to step into this relationship of discipleship? And so Easter is like, a, we're going to look at it, not as the, uh, an end point, but a starting point. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk about the 40 days after the resurrection into the ascension. We're going to talk about, you're having a hard time with your I cup there, bud. This mug. Yeah, it's a, that J mug. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about what does discipleship look like? We're going to give you tools to help people through the process. And, you know, a lot of that is based in this, as Americans, we're pretty selfish when it comes to our time and, and what we need to do and mm-hmm. and uh, everything that we got going on because we're busy. Like, we're just a busy culture. and uh, But I think that we can help you. Like, we can help you really um, produce disciples because that's what you're called to. And anything that you're called to that Jesus calls you to, he's going to empower you um, to fulfill. He's going to empower you to do successfully. And so... Um, we're going to walk you through that process. The simplicity of the gospel will be preached on that Sunday. It's not going to be a super deep theological message. It's going to be an invitation, which that's what Christianity is. That's what the gospel is. It's an invitation yeah, into sure. his goodness, into his love. And um, 
all you have to do is be willing to open up your heart and say, hey, would you like to come? Just like Nate said, I mean, the, the invitation, just give, be the invitation that God is to us, that he's been to you. I say it all the time. I was saying that says, hey, how many of you really love salvation? How many of you think your neighbor would like it as well? Yeah. And okay. so um, no matter how hurting or broken and lost someone is, they were created for this relationship with God. And if we can introduce them to the creator, totally. then uh, they're going to they're going to feel that fulfillment that you don't have to convince them. They're going to experience that and step into mm-hmm. that. And so um, Easter is a great opportunity for that. But it's a starting point. Yes. And we need to work people through that. How mm-hmm. are how do you how do you? Be a good disciple. How do you be? Is that okay? No, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. What is the right phrasing? How to be. How to be a good disciple and then how to create disciples. Because like I said this last week, everything that's alive and everything that's um, within the kingdom of God is called to multiply. Yep. You, know, you look at one seed, one seed <clears throat> produces an entire stock, mm-hmm. you know, with which then produces which seeds. produces fruit, which then produces more seeds. And this this process of multiplication is a is a principle of the kingdom of God. And mm-hmm. if we're not seeing multiplication, then we're probably um, we're probably missing it somewhere. And so let's find those places that we're missing it and let's pursue God in such yeah. a way that those that that righteousness comes into our lives and we look more like Jesus and we look more like his word. We look mm-hmm. more like the New Testament church with signs and wonders and miracles. Um, some of those things are going to make you very uncomfortable, but every single one of them is going to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. That's absolutely. So awesome. Hey, well, you know, that's going to mostly wrap us up for today. But before we go, I just want to, I have a couple things I want to share. First off, <clears throat> I mean, worship is a huge aspect of our walks with, uh, with Christ and, you know, developing ourselves and building ourselves up. So I just want to encourage you guys and let you know that on our YouTube page, uh, Abundant Life GI, we have a uh, a playlist of, you know, uh, wor- Easter themed songs. So if you're looking to, you know, to to gain some perspective and some understanding, and allow the Lord to really speak to your heart in this upcoming season of Easter, uh, we have a playlist. It's called the Holy Week playlist, um, and it's got like 30 songs. You know, you can just have it rolling, and it's a great way to just to be filled with you know, what, what that weekend's all about. So the last thing I want to do is I want to hear from you. Oh man. One Easter song, Easter themed worship song, one, one resurrection, something like that, th- that, uh, you love. I love death was arrested. And I just said one, because if you say more than one, okay, well, let me, you're going to say mine. Let me think about <laughs> all the ones that I'm thinking about. Let me okay. say all the ones that I'm thinking about that I really like. All right. So you already talked about death or arrested. So as you think, man, <laughs> that one. That All right, you good. share yours so I don't step on your toes because obviously you asked this question because you have an answer. Well, to yeah, it. and then I had an answer because I thought I knew what your first answer was going to be too. So I have two. Okay. Okay. Let me think here. I like Graves in the Gardens. Death was arrested. Uh, resurrecting King. Um. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we were listening to this yesterday. Death in His Grave. Oh, oh, such like a good song. Lyri- John Mark McMillan. Lyrically, that song is just. John Mark McMillan, also the writer of How He Loves. How He Loves. Don't you're, get that confused. You're welcome. Uh, hey, confused Caleb. Confused with the news. Hey, hey, Caleb, figure it out, all right? Well, figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> but also, um, story-wise and just the dynamics of the song as well, uh, forever. Yeah. I carry, carry Job's version specifically. Yeah. Like that's... That song is gold. And you know what? All those songs we just said are on our Holy Week playlist for you guys. So go check it out. Yeah, man. Gosh, man. I love it. It's, it's everything that we do is yeah. all about this time. Mm-hmm. So it's good. Uh, it we're going to give you some some tools and some make it easy to, to get people to church on that week as well. So be stay tuned for that. Yes. Uh, tune into our YouTube page. We're going to be talking about this in some of our podcasts. Uh, also excited that uh, we're going to have some special guests uh, coming up here in these yeah. next couple months uh, talking about some some real life That's issues. Right. So it's going to be a good deal. So uh, cool. we just want to thank you guys for joining us as always. We pray you have a blessed week. And uh, Nate, you want to take us out? Yeah, I do. Man, hey, follow us on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, Apple iTunes, Spotify, listen in. I just want to encourage you guys to stay plugged in. No matter where you are at, stay plugged in. Go deeper. God has so much more for you. Uh, Keep an eye out for that devotion that we're going to be starting 
uh, the week before Easter. Man, God is good. I'm excited for Easter weekend yeah. to celebrate. One more thing. Hey, also check out, uh, if you're into podcasts, if you're into uh, watching podcasts or listening to podcasts, uh, Road Less Traveled by my boy Chad. Um, Nate was just on there this I week. I was on there last night. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Real good. Uh, Road Less Traveled. Yes. And cut. And end. That's it. Love you guys. See ya.